Well, hello and welcome to our next session. Next up, we have Shelly Phillips and the session is called I Found More Worth in a Bo Box of Fruit Loops. <laughs> I Found More Worth in a Box of Fruit Loops. And you might be wondering, what on earth is that? Well, that is part of Shelly's story of how she found her worth. And it may be not what you think it is. I'm so excited to welcome my next speaker, Shelly Phillips. She is a sweet tea sipping sassy southerner. Uh, she's a versatile entrepreneur and an award winning professional dedicated to reshaping today's workplace culture for both the employees and businesses to thrive. With a wealth of experience spanning over 25 years in the utility industry, Shelly has garnered num numerous national and state awards for her outstanding strategic communications and public relations skill. As a vice president of communications and public relations at Coveta Fayette <laughs> EMC, she leads by example, championing the belief that work should be a get to rather than go to. Shelly, I am so excited to have you here. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Thanks so much. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love your background. Very sassy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's all about some sparkles and making sure we're showing our worth to the world. And I can relate on that sweet tea sipping lady. I love my tea. I have given up my so coffee I like even have seven it right years here. ago. <laughs> it's getting later here. So I have a <laughs> switch to different beverage. But get ready for this next session, please. Fire up the chat, be here to support Shelly um, and share your insights uh, on social media. I would love your tags on that. Well, Shelly, it's over to you. Thanks so much. I'm going to share my screen so that everybody can see this presentation. So uh, the title is a little unusual, and um, I like to say that's probably because it's a reflection of me. Um, I am not your off the off the shelf kind of speaker. I'm not the off the shelf kind of author that you might be expecting. Um, but I did find my worth in a box of Fruit Loops, and so I want to start our talk today with just so we can get to know each other just a little bit. If you don't mind, if you'll drop in the chat for me, maybe what you had for breakfast this morning. Um, let's kind of get to know each other. And anybody even have Fruit Loops for breakfast this morning? I know that's probably frowned upon these days. Um, Dr. Maria and some of the others may not may not be very happy with me for talking about wanting the sugary cereal in our lives and everything, but it really does play on the topic for today. And oh, oatmeal, coffee, juice, toast, eggs. I see all those comments popping in. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's really interesting how those things have changed over the years. And that's something that we're going to talk about is that how, how what suited us earlier in life may not be suiting us right now and how that we can wrap that up into our brands and we can turn that into something really super special so that the world can really get to know who we are and what's going on. So for me, when I think of breakfast, like I said, and this talk especially, I think of the box of Fruit Loops. And I think I ate them every morning as a child. And bless my teacher's hearts, I washed them down with a glass of chocolate milk too. So I was loaded on sugar by the time the bus delivered me to the school door. But yeah, you've heard that right. Those brightly colored sugary circles accompanied by that smiling toucan that many of us as a child adored. But it's not just a breakfast treat to me anymore. Inside that box, I found a profound lesson in discovering our worth. And as unusual as that might sound, I hope you stick with me while we unpack that and I can share a little bit about that journey with you. So after I had a particularly bad boss experience, and I've listened to the thousands of women who've been in my coaching programs and workshops, I came to realize one thing, and that that is no one will really pay you what you're worth. They only pay you what they think you're worth. But here's what gets really interesting in that, and the conflict that comes from that is that when we ourselves fail to recognize our value and our worth because we're counting on someone else to show it to us. But the great news is, is that you have the power to influence what others think about you. 
And my journey to this realization was not um, straightforward. There were a lot of curbs. There were a lot of bumps in the road. And it involved forgetting that I was in control. I got wrapped up in what someone else's valuation of me was. And yes, finding my worth again, hidden inside places unexpected like a box of Fruit Loops. But minus the cereal box, it's a story that might found, sound familiar to many of you. Because on the surface, self-worth and our professional identity are often intertwined. I want to ask you, and if you'll drop this in the chat for me, when you meet someone new, what's the first thing you learn about them? You know, for most of that, it's what we do for a living. When I introduce myself, I'm like, hey, I'm Chelly. I, you know, I'm an author, or I'm a speaker, or I'm in PR, or I work for this company. And while we get their energy and while we get a little of that spark in them, our jobs really become part of our identity really quickly. And so what happens when that job or more pointedly a boss or a manager change makes you feel undervalued? What if overnight you find that the worth that you've built up over the years is being questioned or even dismissed? I've been there and it's really uncomfortable. One day you're confident and you're comfortable in the role that you've created and the job that you do. And the next day you find yourself even in questioning your own abilities. Um, and so can anyone else relate to that? Has anyone else felt that? Has someone made you feel that your value was not what you thought it needed to be in the workplace. So I want us to explore a little bit about how our self-worth becomes entangled in that professional identity and how our ideas of success really impact our feelings of worth and the profound effect that feeling undervalued in the workplace can really carry over into the rest of our lives. I mean, you, it doesn't stop when you leave the parking lot of the office, or it doesn't stop when you deal with your client for the last time that day. We bring them home. They, they affect our relationships with our spouse, our significant others, our friends, our children, because you carry that with you. And, you know, for most, you know, but most importantly, one of the things I want us to discuss are the strategies and perhaps a little bit of rebellion kind of what came through me after I got an insulting email that I'll share a little bit more about later, that we can actually take control of that narrative and we can showcase our worth through personal branding. And we can ensure that we're seen for the incredible value that we bring to the table. So if you're ready to embark on this journey for me, drop a big I am in the chat for me. I want us to know who is ready for this. If you're ready to discover your worth, to redefine your success on your terms and learn how to communicate your value and confidence and authenticity, we're about to dive in and go on this journey together. So Self-worth is a concept women grapple with. I, I know that because I've coached several. I hear them in my workshops and everything. And I know because the women I've coached have told me that their sense of their own value as a person can get lost sometimes. But here's another catch. Our professional lives have a profound impact on how we view that worth. Why? Because in many ways, society teaches us to measure our value by our successes and our failures in the workplace. I asked you earlier about the things that you learned when you first meet someone new. And that first piece of information exchanged is often what we do for a living. It's almost like our professions are a shorthand for who we are. But it can raise a cru crucial question. What happens when our self-worth and our jobs start to feel less like a reflection of our value and more like a question mark. I asked myself that same question. Why? So let me share a little bit about my personal journey with you. For 20 years, I felt secure in the professional identity I had. I had a bookcase of accolades and industry awards. I had a seat at the table. I had my boss's ear. And I had a sense of belonging within that inner circle at the office. Then almost overnight, because of a shift in management, uh, CEO retired, a new one came in, and I suddenly found myself doubting my abilities despite 
what I had accomplished so far. And, you know, it, it's really amazing to me how fast that happened. That shift took place in less than three months. I went from feeling confident to insecure to unsure of even if I had the ability to do the job anymore. My sense of worth had become so closely entwined with my job title and the validation that I received in that role that, you know, that when I wasn't getting it or when it was being questioned or when I felt like someone else was not valuing what I was doing, it made me question, am I still worthy? Do I still have value? And that can be a really hard pill to swallow. And it's something that really not only just takes an emotional effect, it can take a physical effect on you as well. I remember sitting in a parking lot when I would get to work in the morning and I'd feel that pit in my stomach, that 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 sense of anxiety, like, do I even want to go in here today? Do How can I avoid this person that's causing me all this anxiety? How can I keep my head down? How can I do my job? And the thing that made it worse is I had been there for over 20 years. And so I had grown up in this industry, not only learning the groundwork, but I, you know, I was surrounded by these people that had started working and I did. I knew their families. I knew, you know, all the things that made them tick. And so thinking about, do I leave or do I stay? was not just leaving the job behind, but it was leaving people behind too that were going to leave a, a hole in me that I needed to make sure was going to be filled. So I want to ask, has anyone ever felt that way? Have you ever felt trapped by a situation? Have you ever had someone cause you to question your value and your worth? And this doesn't necessarily have to be all professional. A lot of the lessons that I'm going to talk about as we share through this presentation can actually apply to your personal life as well. And there's also a lot of lessons in here for entrepreneurs. And, you know, if you have felt that way, I hope it's not now. And I hope that you can use these. And if you are feeling that way, I hope the strategies that I share with you are a way that you can dig out from that. We have to start believing that our value you know, we start believing that our value is conditional on the success, but that's really not the case. Our value comes from within us as people. We're born with that God-given value, and it's up to us to dig deep and try to find that. However, when people that are in positions of authority question that or cause us to question that, it can be, it can be hard to climb out of. And so I want to drop this truth bomb on you for a moment. You know, that's, and it's a truth that I learned the hard way. And it's like, your worth is not determined by your job, your title, or anyone else's opinion. And I want you, if nothing else from this presentation, that you take this truth bomb, you screenshot this, you put it up on you know, your refrigerator, you put it on your desk, you do whatever you need to do to remember this, that your worth isn't determined by any of those things. Your worth is intrinsic to you as a person. And, you know, Excuse me. If you remember that box of Fruit Loops I was talking about, my boss actually sent me an email when I finally made the decision that this was something that I was going to have to address, that there was going to be no way that I could stay in the situation anymore. And he actually asked in that email if my skills came from a box of cereal. He thought I'd had a college degree, but because he did not agree with the way I was in, I was offering or sharing my opinion on how some things should be done. You know, he basically said that I feel like your, 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 your skills came from a box of cereal. And that was a really big wake up call for me. And, you know, not only did it spark anger, I said, I had some tears, I had some self doubt, but then, you know, I say something remarkable really happened and it ignited what I call an internal rebellion. After I got over those few moments, well, actually a couple of days of the tears and the anger and everything else, I got pissed off. And, you know, I, I, I got mad enough, not at me and not about anything else, but I just got mad at the situation and I said, you know, I don't have to do this. I don't have to feel this way. I need to take control. I need to start looking for a way out of this. And I had that realization that my worth was mine to define. It was not his to undermine. And that realization was so pivotal. So, you know, separating your job from your self-worth doesn't mean you shouldn't be ambitious or passionate about what you do. 
Rather, it's about recognizing that you're more than your profession. You are more than the sum of your achievements and your failures in the workplace. Your worth is inherent, and it's time that we all start believing that. So if you're on board with me, please type believe in the chat. I want to know that you're believing in yourself, that you're feeling that, that your worth is yours to define. It's not anyone else's to undermine. Thank you, Darlene, Marcy. I see you believing out there. Find that amazing. So how do we begin to untangle our self-worth from our professional identity? And for me, I think it starts with a shift in perspective. We have to recognize the value that we're bringing to every interaction. And it's not just the ones that give us a paycheck. When I say our worth is predetermined, it's trend intrinsic, and it's not for others to decide, our worth comes from what we value, what we show up with, our energy that we bring to it. And as we move forward today, I want you to hold on to this thought that you're in control, that you define your worth, and that you have the power to communicate it to the world. So we're going to explore how we can do that not just through the work we do, but through the way that we present ourselves, our personal branding, and how we connect with others. Our professional identity is part of who we are, but it's not our whole story. You're valuable, you're worthy, and you deserve recognition, not for what you do, but for who you are. So let's see how we do this together. So if, like I said, beginning that this this personal branding works whether you're in the corporate world whether you're a stay-at-home mom and you're wanting to network with a group of people whether you're an entrepreneur whatever it is so help me out I want to know who's in the audience today so if you're an entrepreneur would you stick a one in the chat for me and if you're someone who is climbing the corporate ladder, looking for your next profession or, or someone in the professional realm, stick a two in there. See a lot of entrepreneurs. I love that. So whether you're navigating the corporate ladder in a traditional workplace or steering and building your own entrepreneurial venue, your workplace environment impacts your self-worth. Now, what do I mean by that? The workplace isn't just where you spend a significant part of your time. It's where your abilities, your contributions, and your values are constantly being evaluated. For entrepreneurs, which looks like I have the vast majority of you, is it's a direct reflection on your personal vision, the hard work and the passion that you're putting into growing that business. And the stakes of feeling valued and seen to me are even higher sometimes when, you, when your work environment is the one that you've created from ground up. For those of us that were in the professional realm, you know, constant evaluation can have an impact on how we see ourselves. According to the American Psychological Association, employers, employees who, are, who, face, who feel valued by their employers are significantly more likely to be engaged in their job and satisfied with the work that they do. And, you know, that speaks volumes to me about the power of appreciation and recognition in shaping our perception of self-worth. Now, how do we translate that into the entrepreneur's journey? It's the same. Your feeling valued often comes from your client satisfaction, the market validation. How are you picking up new clients? And also that personal fulfillment that you get from doing a job that you're building from the ground up. But that impact of external validation or the lack of it is what I'm talking about today that can significantly sway your self-esteem and your sense of worth. So when we feel undervalued or we feel overlooked, it can lead to a cascade of negative emotions. So who here has ever felt doubt, frustration, lack of confidence? You know, and I was listening to Dr. Sola earlier and she was talking about burnout. And all of these feelings can come from that kind of feeling as well. If we're not getting valued in the workplace, that can attribute to that burnout that we feel a lot of time. And so it's not just speculation. This is backed by research. These feelings have found that 
only one in three workers in the U.S. feel that they receive recognition or praise for the work that they do. So if that's happening in the workplace, imagine the solitude then of the entrepreneur's path when you are the only one that is talking about how you're doing and what's going on. That recognition can be even harder and more scarce to come by. So consider this, if you will, for a moment. If recognition is such a rare commodity, it's no wonder that our self-worth can f- take a hit when we feel invisible in the workplace. And if you look back on my personal story, like I shared a little bit earlier, that shift in management and that email questioning my value, that was a turning point for me. It wasn't just a professional setback. It became a personal blow. And, and it became very personal to me about how I, was re- how I perceived my own worth. I was forced to confront a harsh truth. That for me, my identity and my self-worth were too closely tied to my job and the validation I received there. And it took me a hot minute to get there. I shed tears. I wallowed in it. And I cussed. Yes, sorry, mom. I, I know this good Southern girls are not supposed to do that, but occasionally it slips out. So how can we safeguard our self-worth amidst the highs and lows of building a business or climbing that corporate ladder? So here's another truth bomb for you. Our worth should not be tied exclusively to our success and our failures. If we tie that worth only to the things that go right in life, and if anything goes wrong, think about how easily it is for someone to undermine that feeling of worth and that feeling of value that we have and that we're creating for ourselves. So, I think, yes, it is important to celebrate successes. And in one of my books, I even talked about adding moments of celebration to our life. You know, in When in Doubt, Delete It, I talk about it being very important that we remember to take moments to celebrate even small wins and small successes. If you want to read more about that, you can scan the the QR code that's on the screen right now and you can download some free chapters of the book and, and the story is in there of that. But it's really important for us to remember that our worth isn't solely measured by those successes. It's important for us to establish boundaries to help differentiate our personal identities from our business identity. And it's even more important that we nurture that self-worth, that we take time and make sure that it is anchored in who we are beyond our profession. Our worth goes beyond our job performance and the accolades that we receive. It's about who you are at your core, your value, your passions, and your contributions to the world around you, both inside and outside of the workplace, really make up who you are, your worth, and your value that you need to showcase and make sure that the world sees exactly what you're bringing to the table. If you take nothing else away from this talk today, I want you to remember this, that your worth is not up for negotiation. And it is certainly not determined by any single person's job that you're invaluable and that you have unique talents and contributions that no one else has. And those extend far beyond your workplace. And so as we move forward, I want us to focus on how we can communicate that value not just to the world, but to ourselves as well. Because um, I don't remember if it was Dr. Sola or if it was Dr. Maria talking about how we talk to ourselves is so important that, you know, we wouldn't say some of the things to our coworkers or to our friends that we allow to take place in our head and what we put inside of our, our own minds and our own thought systems. So together, I want us to build that foundation of self-worth that remains unshaken no matter the challenges or the obstacles that we face in our careers or in our life. So how do we do that? You know, I've been truly blessed to watch my clients' journeys and and how they have transformed and learned to leverage the power of personal branding. To me, this is where the magic happens. When we turn our inner worth into an outer expression that the world can see and appreciate, whether we're climbing the corporate ladder or building our own empires like many of you are doing. To me, personal branding isn't just a buzzword. I know it's a big trend that you're seeing online and things like that. But to me, 
with over with with my experience in PR and marketing, personal branding is really taking us ourselves and showing the world that we're the biggest asset that we have. And it's just like we would do for any other product or any other service that we have. We're that person, we're that product, and we need for the world to connect with us in a way that it showcases and it communicates our unique value proposition to that. It's about telling your story in a way that connects and intertwines your personal and professional identity. And it's in the manner that you do it so that it speaks to your audience. And that audience could be potential employers. It could be clients. It could be collaborators. And it could just be your peer group. I want you to think about it as considering the art of showcasing your unique essence to the world. And here's an easy way to kind of to wrap your head around it. I want you to think of maybe some of the most iconic brands you know. Um, and for for reflection purposes here, I'm going to talk about Rolex and Lamborghini. Like when you say those two words, you immediately think certain things. You know, these brands transcend their mere functionality of telling time or transporting you to the marketplace. You know, a Timex can do the same thing as a Rolex or a VW Bug can do the same thing as a Lamborghini. But when you say those things and you compare those two, you get an automatic picture in your mind of something different. Just choose, you know, like those brands, Rolex and Lamborghini, they embody excellence, prestige, distinction. And just choosing one of those says something about your personal taste and your values. You're making a statement about the value you place on craftsmanship, performance, and status. And so I want you to imagine applying those same principles to yourself. Your personal brand is a narrative of who you are and what you stand for, and the unique blend of skills and experience that you bring to the table. It's what sets you apart from everybody else out there. So I want you to go back with me to that turning point I was telling you about. It's that moment that I realized my worth was being questioned. It was more than just a professional setback. You know, my worth and my identity, I had to let become so entwined with my job, and I needed that validation from it. But here's what I learned. We cannot and should not let our worth be solely defined by one thing, whether that's our work, whether it's our family, whether it's our business. We are a melting pot of all those things, all those influences and all the experiences that we have. So while positive feedback and recognition are important, they are not the sole pillars of our self-esteem. Our true worth extends far beyond our job performance or our entrepreneurial success. It's rooted in our core values, our passions, and our contributions that we share with the world. So how do you go about building um, and crafting and leveraging that personal brand? To me, the first step is it begins with self-awareness. You have to take stock of your achievements. Um, But more importantly, you have to understand that your value isn't dependent on external markers alone. You're going to create boundaries that allows you to separate personal achievements from personal identities and personal values that matter to you. You're going to cultivate a sense of worth that is deeply rooted in who you are and not just the role you play. So for career professionals, this might mean developing a narrative that highlights skills, contributions in the workplace, Um, the things that make you an indispensable leader or part of a team. And so for my entrepreneurs, it may be involved telling the story of your business in a way that connects with the audience. It's the why you're doing what you do. It's about making your brand not just seen, but felt. It's having that connection between someone. Personal branding is more than just storytelling. You also have to be consistent. You have to be authentic. And it's about being invisible. Dr. Maria talked about feeling invisible and how it's, how it's easy for women, especially as we get older, to start feeling invisible and letting other things take priority. And so, you know, for me, keeping your brand alive and keeping it fresh and keeping it growing with you is so important. And keeping that visibility out there is going to ensure that it becomes your living legacy. 
you know, so many of us are on social media and that's where you probably think first and foremost of this is what people are doing as um, how they're building their presence. Their, you know, your online presence and your real world persona need to be aligned. I do a lot on LinkedIn because I work a lot of with corporate clients and I work with professional women a lot. And, you know, even our social media posts, our casual conversations, they all carry these messages out there about who we are and what we value. Our personal brand really becomes a promise to the world. It's our promise of the quality, reliability, authenticity that we're going to bring to every interaction. It's a powerful tool for communicating and building connection and opening doors of opportunities. So when you leave this session, I want you to remember that your brand is an ongoing project. It's one that is going to evolve and grow with you and change with you. Because why? We evolve and we grow and we change as people too. It's not just about landing the next job or securing the next client. It's really about building that legacy that reflects your true worth and value. So if you're ready to get on to the tactics of building your brand, drop a big yes in the comment and let me know that you're ready to let the world see the incredible value that you all possess. So as we begin moving forward, I see a lot of yeses out there and that excite me. So as we begin this journey, I want to empower you with some practical strategies for gaining visibility and communicating that value. And I've used these same strategies with my clients, so I know they work. It's essential that not only that you recognize your worth, but that you ensure that others see it and that they can appreciate what you're bringing to the table. And so with that thought in mind, I want you to close your eyes for just a second. And I want you to think about three words that you want the world to associate with you. What three words do you want people to associate with what you bring to the table, what you value, what matters to you? So when you get those words, jot them down, drop them in the comments if you feel comfortable doing that and sharing them so that we can all celebrate the value that you have. I'm going to give you just a minute to think about it and make sure that you have those words clearly in mind as we move forward. So whether you're in that corporate space or that entrepreneurial world, Making your mark is pivotal. And one of the best ways that you can do that is by creating a personal branding statement. And these words that you're thinking about and these words that are your that you're you're wanting to as people to associate with you is going to be a great starting point. I see some fabulous words, Darlene, people, leadership, development, Esther, quality, impact, personal, relatable. All of those are awesome words to start by thinking about. So when you join this session, um, you're given access to um, my personal Build Your Success brand guide. And in it, you're going to use those words to help develop your branding statement. This is like your North Star. This is how you build your brand, what matters to you and what you need to be seen from. Lisa, I love those contemplation, community, creativity. Those are I, I love the community piece of that. Like it's it's about bringing people together, problem solver, compassionate, perceptive. I think it's Ochina. I hope I said that right. Dr. Maria, inspirational, motivational, energetic. And you are energetic, Dr. Maria. I have, I, there is no doubt that that comes across when anyone encounters you. And so when you think about those three words, your personal branding statement is a concise way to communicate who you are and what you stand for. It should be memorable. It should be authentic. And it really should encapsulate what makes you unique. You know, as you work through the guide that you received, you'll be able to use these insights and that you'll be able to build that branding statement that's going to serve as your North Star and it's going to guide all of your personal and professional interactions. And it's also going to guide the personal brand that you put out to build and show the world. So once you've got that piece, that personal branding statement that I'm talking about, and it's built around these 
words. Patricia, I love creativity, creative passion and honesty. Honesty is so important these days. Um, once you get those pieces and that you're ready to use them, I think it's time for you to maximize your online and your in-person presence. Because a lot of people think personal branding is all about online, but it's so much more than that favor, impact, integrity, commitment. I said, I can get lost in all these words. I love seeing them pop up on the screen as we're going. In today's digital world, that online presence is often the first impression that we make. You know, when we meet somebody at a conference or when we, you know, like when we, when somebody moves into the neighborhood, one of the first thing we do is Google them, see what their social profile looks like or see what we can find out about them. You know, and there's tons of platforms, LinkedIn, websites, professional blogs, and all of those are invaluable tools for showcasing your skills and achievements. But the thing is, if you don't have the idea of who you are solidly in place and you don't have a plan for communicating that, your message can get lost in the crowd. And so you have to be able to regularly update and, and be able to share things and come up with a plan that's going to continually put you out there, that's going to be authentic to you, that it's going to raise engagement, that it's going to increase your visibility, and it's really going to establish you as that thought leader in your space. Your personal branding statement can also help you network. And this doesn't necessarily have to be at official business functions. This can be standing in line at the grocery store or at a church event or anything like that. It's kind of a way of introducing yourself to someone so that they get the idea of who you are and what you value. So it's 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 about, you know, when you're when you're networking and when you're when you're trying to build that that collaboration of people. It's about building meaningful relationships. So even if you consider yourself an introvert, don't discount the impact of relationship building and how much that can impact your branding efforts. So whether you're attending conferences, like I said, going to association meetings, or even for, you know, taking part in events like this Thrive Women's Thrive Conference today, you can connect with the other people, the peers and the other speakers here in here. And you're able to actually come away with a new network of people that can help you and you can share resources and you can share ideas and they can share your passion. So, you know, I always tell everybody, don't forget that networking is two ways. Make sure you're offering value and make sure you're supporting others and helping them build and grow as people as well. So once you've developed that personal brand, one of the things I tell people is you can't be afraid to showcase your achievements. And I know that can be hard for some of us. You know, I was raised in the deep South in the U.S. And my mom always told me all through life, it's not nice to brag. Don't talk about yourself. Anybody else get that message when they were growing up? Well, you know, and a lot of the women that I've coached struggled with imposter syndrome, feeling like they're not the best out there so that they they shouldn't be talking about what they're doing because someone else is doing it better than them. They feel kind of like a fraud. But I'm here today to tell you, please don't be shy about sharing your successes. And successes don't necessarily mean that I have to win the biggest clients or I have to secure the biggest contract or I have to have a kid that has straight A's and on the valedictorian list. You know, those are all great things, but a success can also mean I made it through the week and I learned, you know, I, I was able to do my hobby the best I could, or I wrote a chapter in my book, or I made a new friend and I think we'll be able to collaborate on something. All kinds of successes can go into building your personal brand. And for the next couple of minutes, I want to give you two real action steps that I want you to follow so that you can start sharing your brand successfully online. And, you know, like I said, you know, we can't look at it as boasting. Uh, Mercy, I love that. Success can also mean I made it through the week. Yes, I told somebody one day that my success for the week was not punching somebody in the break room because they annoyed me so much on a project that we were working on. So I totally get that. Totally believe that. Um, thinking of it as, you know, I want you to think of your brand as sharing your passion, sharing your contributions. You know, whether it's completing a project, getting a new certification, a speaking engagement, you know, whatever it is, 
that success is yours to define. And success looks different for each of us along each path of our own life. And so the strategy that I want to share with you that I use with some of my clients is called keeping a success journal. And I call it a success journal, but it can be a lot of different things. It can be a post-it note. It can be at, you know, at the the end week of your planner. It can be online. It can be on your phone in the notes. It can be anywhere you want it. I just call it a success journal. And so what I want you to do is every, at the end of every week, I want you to keep a running list of your wins that week, big or small, doesn't matter. I want you to keep it for three months. My very first business coach that I had taught me to think in 90 days, and it was probably one of the most impactful things that I did because as we're growing businesses and as we're building um, our connections and things like that, we get so overwhelmed with the big picture. Like, did I hit certain targets? Did I make these kind of things that we really forget to celebrate the milestones along the way that got us there? And it takes a lot of small successes to come up with some of the big successes. And so what I'd say is like, let's reflect for the 90 days, reflect on what you did each week. And then every Monday, pick out one of those successes and celebrate it as you start the week. It'll put you in the right frame as you begin starting your next week and you start tackling the, the, the roadblocks and the problems and the situations that you have arise. And it also allows you to reflect and it's a powerful reminder that you have a story that's worth sharing. And when we share these successes and when we share these wins, it also can empower others to do the same thing because we're sharing what impacting us and we become very relatable and we become very memorable and inspiring to others as well. And then what you'll do at the end of that 90 days is if you'll take you know, like go through your planner, go through whatever you were doing and pick out your big three for that quarter and look how far you came in that three months period. This is not, this not only boosts, you know, your, your visibility when you're sharing these things, but what it does is it really solidifies your brand in your mind and you're going to become more clear on what matters and what you should be showcasing and how that impacts your audience and how that brings people to you and that you're getting the people that you want to come towards you. The next thing that I would say is you're building your brand. Don't forget to get feedback and endorsements. You know, it's not, it's not wrong to ask somebody, Hey, if you had a great experience with me, do you mind writing about it for me? Do an endorsement on LinkedIn, tell, you know, write a Facebook post for me, whatever it is that, you know, you have, get that proof, you know, be able to share that out there. It gives you a lot of credibility. It gives you a lot of authenticity. And, you know, when you take that branding guide and you go with your personal branding statement and you develop a system for putting out there the information that people need, that you want people to associate with you and what you're doing, it's going to give you a great a great building block to be able to open the door to new opportunities and new connections. It's also going to allow you to step into that spotlight with confidence and showcase the incredible value that you possess and what you bring to the table when people are working with you. So before we leave this session, I want you to picture that's the, the fruit Loops one more time. You know, as I found myself reflecting on that nasty email from my boss, um, and I was thinking about this, and when he actually referred to the cereal, the first thing that popped in my head was the Fruit Loops that I ate as a child. And what I remembered most was that my brother and I would always fight over who got the prize inside. Because when I was growing up back in the 70s and the 80s, you know, there was always something hidden inside, whether it was a little plastic figurine, whether it was a pack of stickers, whatever it was. There was some kind of prize inside. And that memory became a metaphor for my journey of rediscovery about unearthing my worth that had been buried beneath doubts and external judgments, just like uncovering that hidden treasure inside that cereal box. So this revelation wasn't just about finding value in unexpected places. It's a reminder that our worth is always present. 
It's waiting to be acknowledged and celebrated. And regardless of any of the external challenges or setbacks that we face, we have worth inside of us. We have value inside of us that we need to share. So I recall that time of doubt when I, you know, I questioned my worth and my professional identity felt unanchored. You know, the doubt was not a dead end, but I call it a detour now. And that path led me to rediscover my value. It opened doors because it caused me to really reflect on who I was and what I wanted the world to see that I brought to the table. You know, our personal brands were so resilient and we're, you know, and when we're authentic, it really will propel you back to wherever it is you want to be. And it's going to give you that renewed sense of self. And so this journey wasn't just about reclaiming my position in the business world. It was really about redefining my worth and how I communicated it to the world. And you can do that same thing. And so as you reflect on the importance of understanding your intrinsic worth and the power of personal branding and the strategies for communicating our value, every time you go to the grocery store, anytime you're in a big box shop or when you're perusing the buffet line at breakfast at some hotel and you see that box of Fruit Loops, I want you to think about this conversation. I want you to think about how I discovered my worth again amidst that colorful chaos of circles. And I want you to hold on to that unique value that transcends the professional achievements and really becomes that external showing of the value that you are inside. And so the narrative isn't unique to me. Each of you has the potential to undertake this journey. And, you know, I hope today's session serves as a blueprint for this journey for you. But there's three key takeaways that I want you to have. And that is that your worth is intrinsic. It is not defined by your job title, the accolades that you receive, or any setback that you encounter. Your worth is personal to you. Personal branding is powerful. It allows you to articulate and showcase your worth and it ensures that your professional identity aligns with who you truly are and what you value. And that value communication is essential. And it's about sharing who you are and the value that you bring to the table. And that is super important in today's competitive landscape if you're an entrepreneur or you're climbing that corporate ladder. So as you reflect on these takeaways, I want you to remember that your brand is totally growing and evolving as you continue to grow and evolve. You'll have the opportunity to continually redefine and communicate your worth as you continue on your journey. Who I was at 25 is not who I am at 53 now. My goal today has been to inspire and give you some proven strategies that you can use to communicate your worth. And I hope that it helps you reach your vision of success. And if it resonates with you, I want you to know that I'm here to support you and empower you and help you down that road to building a brand that opens the door to new opportunities and success for you. And so if that's you, I would love to share with you about the opportunity that I have for people that are attending this summit. Um, Just like I've helped other women over the past, I encourage you each to take that moment and reflect on your worth. Um, I have a special five-week coaching program that I've put together just for Thrive Women's participants. And in that time, we'll define your value, we'll bring out your areas of expertise, we'll craft that personal branding statement, and we'll develop a plan for you to be able to share that brand in a way that gets you visibility and authenticity. And like I said, it's a five-week coaching program, and we'll do an audit of your current online assessment. We'll have four weeks of coaching and accountability through Zoom. There'll be recordings of those coaching sessions. Um, You'll get access to my Successfully Ever After course that has templates and workbooks and more inside that. You'll get a personal branding plan with implement implementation recommendations so that you can continue the work after our coaching sessions been and you'll get also a one-on-one deep dive with me for that strategy session to make sure that it continues <laughs> so i hope this has been a value to you and i look forward to seeing all of you and your brands showing up online and in person and i hope i have a chance to encounter many of you again And please remember those three words that you had in there that I am so excited to see that you have all been um, 
amazing audience and that you are all ready to build your brand and showcase the value that you bring to the world. Shelly, so good. This is beautiful. So practical. And thank you so much for sharing your story. And I think some people who have perhaps been in that corporate ladder and have worked um, probably face similar experiences. A lot of times we're so undervalued and underappreciated and people just don't see the worth. And I think it's until we see our worth and present ourselves in that way um, that things start to change. And I love that you've given so many practical steps for people to actually start to recognize and present themselves as a person of value. Uh, so this was beautiful. Thank you so much, Shelley. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I said, it really is something that I'm passionate about. I've seen, you know, I tell everybody, it, it was funny how all those years I've spent in PR and marketing, and I never really thought about using those same tools for me as a person. You know, I did it for the corporate story. I did it for product lunches. I did it for all of those kind of things. But, you know, we really are our biggest assets. And if we're not telling that story and we're not putting it out there for people to see, then we're doing ourselves a disservice because, you know, like I said, no one's going to pay you what you're worth, just what they think you're worth. And we control how people think. And to me, when I got that thought in my mind and when it became something that I really focused on is such a powerful way of thinking about you, what you're offering and how you bring it and showcase it to the world. Yeah, definitely. And I think what you've shared today is also so practical, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're looking to build your career even further. Uh, these tips um, were just invaluable. Does anyone have any questions, anything you may want to ask or clarify from Shelly, or maybe you've shared some of the experiences, let us know in a chat. And I love that you spoke about celebrating our successes, even small ones, and especially for those who have, you know, constantly out there doing our things, building our businesses, just a reminder to look, every milestone needs to be celebrated. Uh, so that was beautiful as well for me. Thank you. I said, you know, as we're starting out, you know, like you think, okay, I've got to reach this certain dollar mark or my business is not successful, or I haven't had a great quarter, or I haven't done any of that kind of stuff. And a lot of times it's real easy for us to forget that you can't do it all at once. And that really and truly, you know, when you look back over it in quarter chunks, the 90 day chunks that I was talking about, it really does begin to show up, especially at the end of a year when you can really see, oh, my networking caused me to meet this person, which allowed this collaboration to happen, which turned into this partnership, which added to this business growth. And if you don't do the small things and you don't celebrate those along the way, they can really get lost and you don't really see the pattern of what's causing you the success. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I look back on, you know, all of us coaches need coaches too, you know, and it's like, it's like, had I not had that, that coach tell me that, and it, you know, that was probably seven, eight years ago now, I, you know. But I still do that now. It's something that I, I keep up with. And and I actually have a one of those big post-it note papers on the wall of my home office and that every quarter I put down the three big wins for the quarter and I have them for several years going back. And when you start that, you can really look and see, you know, how you've progressed along the way and how how my messages have evolved. And, you know, it, it's just such a powerful way to continue to grow your brand because you begin to see what's really relevant, what's connecting with other people and what's bringing those people to you. So you're able to actually share with them information that's more valuable to them, which connects them even closer to you and what you're doing. Yeah. And I always say that success is not some kind of destination that you finally wake up and you're there. It's just a collection of small wins and daily progress. And then when you look back and you'd have that reflection moment, um, then you realize, wow, yeah, as you say, you've achieved a lot. So don't forget to celebrate those small successes along the way as you reach out for the big goal. So, yeah, and success looks different for everybody. You know, like you cannot compare what's a win for you 
with what it can win for somebody else because everybody's in that different part of that journey. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if someone's just starting out and they, let's just say they looked at you and said, oh, she's got this amazing summit. She has this magazine. She has all this network of people. Well, that didn't happen overnight for you. You know, like it's it's the progression of all these things that have happened over the years and, and how you've connected with people and the things that have really, I'm sure there's been things along the way you tried that didn't work out that you said, no, that's not going to be part of the repertoire anymore. And so, you know, I, you know, I really, when I'm working with clients, you know, I encourage them as like you, you develop your own idea of success. It doesn't have to look like someone else's for it to truly be success. And when you find that vision for you and you're able to share that message, it becomes so powerful. Yeah. I can't tell you how much this resonates genuinely. Like it's been a collection of so many relationships, one by one, small wins, small actions, stretching yourself out to, you know, where you are today. And one of the biggest ones was com- committing actually to posting to our Instagram on a daily basis. And we started to grow our Instagram account rapidly. And then I completely forgot to pay attention to our Facebook. And one day I go onto our Facebook and we have like more than 10,000 followers. It's like, how did that even happen? Like I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> but it's all the work and commitment that I was doing on Instagram that was just trickling down and just staying consistent. So success mm-hmm. is consistency. It's not just one thing and it's just going to be like, you know. <laughs> Shelly, thank you so much. Um, uh, the the program you've mentioned, I um, just posted a link. So thank you for sharing that. I don't, uh, we didn't mention a cost. Is there a cost uh, or do they so find it's that? So 1750 they... for the five weeks, um, that's US dollars. Um, and, um, you know, I, I'm so excited for this, uh, for people to be able to walk away with a real practical plan, a real strategy in place and, and, and something that is really going to set them up for success going forward. Beautiful. Thank you, Shelley. Appreciate it. So if you have been inspired, motivated by Shelley, what she shared today, I hope you've taken some screenshots. And if you have, post it on social media, because for every post you make, we're entering you into a draw to win $25 uh, prizes each day to, to give flowers to our speakers. Again, uh, the best way to honor their time and contribution to their platform, make sure you follow them on social media, opt into their free gifts if they have, uh, send them a message on social media. And if you feel called to, I'd love for you to fill out a survey. And believe me, there are chances to win. We've, we also dedicating three $50 vouchers for those who have submitted a survey. So go ahead and submit that. And if you feel like Shelly was your chosen speaker for today, uh, leave her a testimonial. We are sure going to be passing those on. Shelly, thank you so much for your time and contribution to our platform. Truly grateful that you are here today. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity, Ray. It's been a total pleasure. Appreciate it. This was Shelly Phillips. Make sure you connect with her and take advantage of these offers that our speakers have so gratefully uh, created. Thanks so much. Thank you.